This video will discuss perturbation theory in quantum mechanics, which is another method for computing the approximate energies and wave functions of a quantum mechanical model system for which we do not know the exact result. So we'll start with some system here. We have h psi equals e psi, our Schrodinger equation for the whole system. We have some Hamiltonian such that we don't know what the exact wave functions and energies are of the system. So we assume there's some quantum number psi n which separates all the different states and that there's some energy which depends on this quantum number. So we're not only potentially interested in the ground state but maybe also some excited states. But the point is we've got some Hamiltonian such that we can't solve the Schrodinger equation exactly. So what are we to do? Well, we could use the variational method, we could use the linear variational method, or we could use an alternative approach called perturbation theory. So in perturbation theory, we start with a reference Hamiltonian and reference Schrodinger equation of a known system. So H naught psi naught equals E naught psi naught. Uh, psi naught, it, H naught is the Hamiltonian for a model system that we can solve exactly. Psi naught is the wave functions versus the different quantum numbers for that system. And E naught are the different energy levels of that system versus their quantum numbers. So what we're going to do is take our total Hamiltonian, for which we cannot solve the Schrodinger equation exactly, and we're going to separate it into two pieces. One part called a reference Hamiltonian, H0, for which we can solve for the wave functions and energies exactly plus a part script V here called the perturbation, which encapsulates all the stuff that we don't know relative to the reference system. The hope is that our total system is pretty close to the reference Hamiltonian and that the perturbation is a small difference away from H0 such that our approximate solutions to H will be pretty good and we can tolerate the approximations uh, at low order. So what perturbation theory is going to give us is it's going to give us our total energy as a sum of various terms. So we have the first, we have the zero order energy or the reference energy which we get from our known system. Then we have what's called the first order energy plus the second order energy and we can go up as high as we want into any order we want. So that's called the order of perturbation theory. Typically we hope that our perturbation theory is good enough at first order, maybe second order. Usually if we have to go into third order or beyond, it's getting, either, it's getting difficult and we either say we don't want to do that or let's try to choose a, a different reference. So our wave function as well is a sum of different pieces. It's, our wave function is going to be the reference wave function plus the first order wave function plus the second order wave function, etc., etc., all the way up to the order that we pick to do our perturbation theory up to. All right, in the next video, or either next video or two videos from now, I don't remember, I'm going to derive how we get these values, but for now I'm just going to state them. So the reference energy comes directly from our reference Hamiltonian. That's the integral over all space of psi star, of psi star n times h naught times psi n, of, uh, sorry, psi naught n in each case. So this is just the expectation value of H0 acting on our reference wave function. The first order energy is the expectation value of our perturbation operator acting on the reference wave functions, psi 0 n. The first order wave function is then going to be determined by uh, some of these integrals here and the energy differences between uh, reference states. So that we're not going to discuss the first order wave function here, but just for those of you that are interested, we would sum over all states, m up from 0 to infinity, where m does not equal to n because of this denominator. So psi 1 for state n would be the integral at each of these levels of psi m star v psi n over the energy of state n minus the energy of state m. That would be that coefficient times state m. So we're not going to discuss that a lot. That's getting more advanced. But what we are going to use in this is our perturbation operator and our first order energy. 
So there are a couple systems that will constitute basically the, the vast majority of the examples that you'll, you'll probably be expected to calculate for perturbation theory. These are also probably the examples that are going to show up on your homework sets and tests and exams for a uh, variational method as well if that shows up. So we have first is the anharmonic oscillator. So for the harmonic oscillator, we had a Hamiltonian of kinetic energy minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x plus potential energy 1 half kx squared. We were able to solve that exactly for this orange potential for the energies and wave functions of the harmonic oscillator system. All was good. But the exact uh, potential energy surface that a vibrating diatomic molecule feels is not harmonic. It actually is somewhat anharmonic because the tail is, is soft and the wall is too hard, so it actually has some anharmonicity to it. If we wanted to get a higher or a better uh, approximation to the true chemical system, what we could do is include anharmonic terms. We, if we continued the Taylor series of potential energy, we'd look at the third and fourth derivatives, calculate these gamma 3 and gamma 4 terms, and we'd add plus 1 6 gamma 3 x cubed plus 124 gamma of gamma 4 x to the fourth. So this would be our reference Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator system and this would be our perturbation. For the particle in a slanted box which we looked at for the linear variational method we would have h equals the kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over 2m d squared dx squared second derivative with respect to x. That was the full Hamiltonian for the particle in a box. There was no potential energy inside the box, an infinite outside. But for the particle in a slanted box, we had a slant linear inside the box. It starts at 0 at x equals 0, and it goes up to v naught at x equals l, giving us a potential energy function of v naught x over l. So our reference Hamiltonian would be the particle in a box Hamiltonian, h naught, plus our perturbation v naught x over l. So whenever you're faced with a situation that you can't solve and you want to use perturbation theory, try to find one of the four reference systems that we've solved thus far, particle in a box, harmonic oscillator, rigid rotor, hydrogen atom. Try to find one of those four and then make that your reference Hamiltonian and then put everything else in terms of V, our perturbation operator for perturbation theory.